And welcome back to the Constitutional Podcast. I'm your host, Chad White. If you didn't know, this is the premier podcast for the website, cpluscomedy.com. Like I just said, it's a website. Go there, get into the stopwatch, press and play. Here we go. Welcome. <laughs> I just banged my arm on the microphone stand. Welcome back. Constitutional Podcast. Like I said, premier podcast, website, C plus comedy. Go there. We are back. Another week, episode 130. I've done 130 half hours, two hours sometimes. Sometimes these are full hours. Uh, different kind of setup if you're watching the video, slightly. Looking decent. I don't know how the GoPro looks, obviously. There's a new GoPro Hero 8 that came out. It's been reviewed by Engadget, The Verge, all those other tech outlets. I want it. I'm not spending $400 on that thing. <laughs> so let's take with the Hero 3, which is obsolete. Last week, I did an interview for a friend. I didn't do an interview. I produced it. Uh, I think I mentioned it before. Major Keys, my good friend, Shantiana Keys. She does interviews for uh, women, people, women in sports. Uh, gets notably bigger interviews than I have been getting. <laughs> And I've been doing this for six years. <laughs> and she's been doing her thing for six months. <laughs> Let's say that. Let's say six months. Let's say a year. Let's say a year. Oh, I'll give her the benefit of the doubt. Anyway, I produced it last week and uh, we talked to LaChina Robinson. I think that's her name. <laughs> she played basketball, women's basketball. And she is, I'm sorry, I'm playing with my sock. It, it looks like I'm just flicking my leg down here. I'm just playing with my sock. If you can see it in the video. Anyway, with Shana Robinson. And uh, we went to a secluded location. <laughs> I'm not going to say where. Because <laughs> it might, may not be where she lives. And we recorded <laughs> this half hour interview. I actually took time off of work to do so. I left. I, w- I went to work early. Left for like an hour and some change. Came back. And uh, thank God it was 10 minutes from where I worked because otherwise it would have been real tough to leave for two hours and then come back. Uh, in the middle of the interview, uh, we, we had to use my equipment, so that's why I was, I mean, and also I know how to handle these things. Uh, but I took my lights and a lot of camera stuff over there. And so we had three cameras set up. Plus, I was doing handicam with the uh, DJI. <laughs> you know, I spent I spent like 130 bucks on that, so I might as well use it. So I have my phone in the in the Osmo Mobile Two. So I'm doing handheld stuff, and then uh, so we're recording with three DSL DSLRs, and all of a sudden I hear is uh, a tsh- it was one of the cameras shutting off, which I hear all which I hear periodically because this DSLR shuts off, uh, and I run over, and I go, all right, I'm gonna press record again. It won't record, and I'm freaking out. I press record again. It won't record. <laughs> so the second time after I press it, I go, okay, if I hit it one more time, then the SD card is failing. Like, because, because, you know, I've, because, like, that's the reason why this shuts off sometimes, and that's the reason why the GoPro shuts off sometimes. The SD, the SD card fails. Uh, it's just been old. It's because it's been overwritten, you know, a thousand times. So I, so I press it again, and this all happens in the span of maybe. 20 seconds, everything I'm telling you right now, press it a third time. I go, okay, it's dead. I, <laughs> I, I flick off the camera, grab the, grab the SD card. I'm still holding the handy cam while I'm doing all this. So I run over to, uh, to Keys's coworker. Who's also there helping us shoot this thing. I run over her and I go, I tap her on the shoulder. I go, hold this SD card died and just give it to her. <laughs> and I run off. I get my, I have my DSLR. I grab the SD card out of there. I know it's, I, my SD card is probably older than hers, but I run over, throw it inside the camera, put it back on, and I swear to God, this all happened within 20 to 30 seconds. Like me hitting record three times, realizing it's not working, grabbing the SD card, blah, blah, blah. I know this because I I was editing the video. Let's see if I can bring it up on the, uh, I still have it up on the camera, uh, on the uh, premiere, the premiere file. I still have it up. I was editing the video. As you can see, if you're watching the video, there's four uh, panels inside the multi-camera editing that I was doing last night. It's very tiring because usually I can do, I can knock out the you know, the constitutionals in in half an hour if I'm editing. 
that includes exporting it to and uploading. I can knock it out half an hour. Uh, but this has taken me all week. Also, I've been very tired uh, because I can hear everything from my neighbor. I can hear everything. I mean, I have not been able to get good sleep, get good rest because neighbors beside me, extremely loud. And there's like, it's when I say Bohemia Rhapsody, I mean, it's like Bohemia Rhapsody over there. They're over there all hours of the night, hanging out, smoking cigarettes, smoking weed. Cause I can smell it through my room, the room where I sleep. And then I got the the women above me walking around as if they are bowlers and if they have Tim's on, Timberland boots. Every single step. I know when they pee. I know when they eat. I know when they're both home. I know when one of them's home. I swear to God. I can hear them <laughs> opening the front door. I can hear them going up the stairs, the metal stairs. They walk heavy. And, and then I'm just here, you know, a single person watching TV, eating the food, by myself, alone, being rel- relatively quiet, you know, like 99% of the time, except for the 1% where I'm taking a shower and I have the one of the Google Homes playing moderately low music. Otherwise, I'm a quiet person and I just, I, it, it, it befuddles me how the people around me just are just every hour of the day, bang, 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 loud. It's insane. Anyway. We didn't come here to watch me complain, sort of. Let's get on to it. I want to talk about Batwoman, the new CW TV show. Uh, it came on this past Sunday. Very excited to see it start, uh, but I was not. I'm not looking forward to the requisite. This is a first time show, and we're gonna treat it as such. So it's it's an origin story. If you know Batwoman, Batwoman. What, they did a soft pilot for it during Elseworlds. Obviously, it was going to be, you know, a show. I had no doubt this this was going to become a show. But Batwoman appeared in Elseworlds during Arrowverse's uh, annual crossover with Supergirl, Flash, and Arrow. And Ruby Rose plays Batwoman. She does a great job. I have no qualms with her. Uh, what I am worried about... We have seen uh, parts of it in the uh, um, pilot. Is that it's just going to be a show about a lesbian superhero. Whereas it should be a show about a superhero who happens to be a lesbian. I've mentioned this before. I don't think traits, I don't think race or gender or sexuality anything that doesn't matter immediately. I don't think that should be important. And I don't think that should be, a, I'm sorry, not important. I don't think that should be, because <laughs> that sounds really bad. I don't think that should be an immediate importance. It shouldn't be a trait. It shouldn't be, she can. She fights bad guys, she's a lesbian. It should be, she fights bad guys, she's a bad woman. She's related to Bruce Wayne. So far, they're doing pretty decent with that. On the reason I mentioned that is because on Supergirl, Supergirl's sister, they made her lesbian without warning, out of nowhere, and it was just poorly done. I don't care what anybody says; it was a bad way. That was a bad coming out story, and they ruined it. <laughs> that woman's really uh, interesting, though. She also stars alongside Rachel Skarston, <laughs> Megan Tandy. Nicole Gang, really a women focused show. Uh, Cameras Johnson is Luke Fox. Doug Grace Scott, Elizabeth Anois. And Rachel Maddow is in this show as Vesper Fairchild, but she's only the voice. Takes place in uh, Gotham City. There's no Batman. Batman's been gone for three years. All in all, I liked it. I liked it. Nice little pilot. I don't like origin stories. Really wish they could have just hopped right in there. And there's going to be flashbacks too. So it's an Arrowverse show. Every show except for Flash and Legends has flashbacks. But I can't wait to see what this show looks like next year. Because obviously they're going to be doing this stuff where they have to pay service to Batman. And they say the word, they say, and I'm so glad, I'm so glad the show is Batwoman. Because they don't have to dance around the words, the name Batman anymore. Because that, that's what that's what they had to do in Arrow. That's what they well, I mean, they still do it in Arrow, 
the only time the first time we heard Batman was we heard Bruce Wayne in Supergirl, and that was and that was just by name. And we been, and, you know, the first time we heard Clark Kent Superman was it was just awe inspiring, even though it was played by a guy that they hired a face of instead of a body. <laughs> you heard what I said. They had a face instead of a body. But Batwoman's very fun. I can't wait to see, again, in a year, I think this show's going to be fantastic. Black Lightning came back as well. And that show really just... <laughs> it, <laughs> it, here's the line of where it, it crosses <laughs> between being... Uh, uh, it's a, it's a uh, black for the sake of black. <laughs> coming from a black guy all right let's move on to uh, one thing before i take a break this comes from the verge netflix's irishman is heading to broadway but it's not going to theaters now i've talked about this before netflix and streamers netflix amazon hulu if you want your movie to be considered for awards such as the academy awards oscars then you need to put them in theaters for a certain amount of time or for them to go to film festivals like the Cannes Film Festival. I wonder if you can hear this chair squeak because it is so loud. (laughs) Here comes Netflix's surefire Oscar winner, The Irishman, Martin Scorsese. His next very white movie. (laughs) Uh, Major theater chains I was uh, written by, excuse me, I always have to mention the writer, Nick Stat. Two, three T's in that name. S T A T T. Good for him. So, The Irishman is probably going to miss theaters. It's probably going to miss major chains like AMC and Regal. So, instead, the company intends to screen it ahead of its streaming debut on November 27th at Broadway Theater. It's going to be shown at the Schubert Organization's Belasco Theater in New York City, making it the first movie screening for the 112-year-old institution from November 1st to the 21st. For, uh, November 1st to December 1st, it will also it will follow a standard Broadway theater schedule, which means eight screenings per week, spanning Tuesday and Sunday, Tuesday to Sunday, with matinee showings on the weekends. Netflix intends to install modern screening equipment for the 1,016-seat theater. So it can properly show the film. Uh, this is Scorsese is talking about how they lose, they lost theaters in <laughs> New York City. No. Anyway, uh, like I said, bigger theaters are refusing to show it because Netflix does not generally play nice with them, which is a shame because uh, I I understand where Ted Sarandos and his team are coming from. That movie theaters are dying and ticket sales are losing, you know, two, three, five, eleven percent every year over year. Uh, but the fact of the matter is the two, there are too many big people, too many big boys. I don't want gender. <laughs> too many big boys that still run everything. Like I wouldn't want to make a new headphone and say there's a there's an ad for Beats Power Power Beats Pro, which is the only headphone I want right now. Truly. Oh my god. The true oh gosh. Too bad I have an Android phone. But what I <laughs> what am I saying? <laughs> but if I was gonna make a headphone, I wouldn't come out and say Beats sucks. Cause I don't think that's the case anymore. I know Beats was uh talked talked trashed upon. Uh, because of how they they included, I, and I think they changed their procedures now, but they included cheap hardware and just sold it, you know, the name, sold the headphones with the name Beats. Uh, but now I think everything is premium. Anyway, it's neither here nor there. But I wouldn't go, I wouldn't like, you know, I wouldn't talk smack about JBL or Beats or even Skull Candy because those are the companies that have been around the longest and then put out the Chattiums. <laughs> <laughs> the Chattiums, which is a a very bad headphone. <laughs> it's held together with gum and tape, and it only works in one ear <laughs> because there's only one bud. <laughs> it's one ear bud. 
<laughs> like those, like the um, the single earbud you got with old phones, like Nokia phones, flip phones. Look at them, kids. So Netflix is going to work with smaller indie-friendly chains, according to Ray. Like Alamo Drafthouse, provide the Irishman with slightly more nationwide reach during its limited one-month run, which will coincide with the Belasco event. Uh, blah, 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 blah. So this is obviously going to allow them to qualify for the Academy Awards because I think you have to be 90 days. 90 days. You have to be inside the movie theaters for 90 days. Standard Hollywood practice is that producers and studios agree to theater chains' exclusivity agreement that dictates a certain amount of time, typically 90 days, before a movie moves from silver screen to streaming platforms. So, so it's probably you have to be in theaters for a month and then three months your movies on the platform. But what Netflix is doing is they say day and date, you can watch a movie at home or you can go to theater and see it. But why would you go to the theater and see it? (laughs) Exactly. But Roma, that's how people saw Roma in theaters. And that's how it was suggested. You go see it. Uh, I always meant to watch Roma. Never did. Never will. (laughs) Not in the mood. I was on the cusp of being in the mood, but I'm not, I've never, I will never watch the movie probably. (laughs) Uh, so there we go. The Irishman is going to hit Broadway before even it's a real theater. It's a shame that this is like this. Hey, listen, let's take a break and come back. Stuff. <laughs> well, go back to the Constitution among us. <laughs> this is a nice, solemn, lonely break for me. It's really quiet. Hey, let's talk about this. Let's talk about more podcasting. Last week I talked about how you would never make money in a podcasting format. And now I want to talk about Luminary, the podcasting company. The company that I reported on, on News Time. Nigh upon um, a couple of months ago. (laughs) I don't know. I don't remember. I feel like I should look into the camera more, but... I like looking at my eyes, looking at the TV. (laughs) This comes from The Verge as well. Written by Ashley Carmen. Podcast startup Luminary. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me say the uh, title. Podcast startup Luminary's co-founder steps down from chief strategy role. So now if you don't know what Luminary is, Luminary is a podcasting platform and service where you can get all of your regular podcasts. Do what you wish. However, they do have an $8 service, $8 a month service where you subscribe and you get exclusive shows, premium shows. But these aren't just any premium shows. These are premium shows from super famous people. Trevor Noah, Hannibal Burris, which was on the Airwolf service before. Uh, Lena Dunham, just a whole a slew of people. Um, I was going to say maybe Justin Long too, but I think his podcast just comes out regularly. Uh, what's that show called with the girls that I don't like the women I don't like guys we effed that show that, that show's got is on there as well um, I like that show and I like those <laughs> that's a very true statement <laughs> and I don't like the fans either <laughs> no one listens to this show it's fine I mean what are the chances like what is so I mean I work in television What what happens if like I sell a show and then uh, I get like a fan base and then people, people start be like, Oh, let's go to see plus comedy. And they start, wa- they, they start watching news time. <laughs> they start listening to this show from, you know, cause they're those fans that, you know, start or whatever. Start at the beginning. Who is going to, who's going to listen to episode 130? <laughs> who's going to make it from one to one thirty and go, he doesn't like guys. We aft. I hate that guy. <laughs> this doesn't make sense to me. So Luminary is a lot like Stitcher Premium. Stitcher Premium is uh, the um, $5 a month one owned by a company that I w- might work for. <laughs> That's just, I'll stop talking. <laughs> I do work for them. Uh, but this show's, uh, this show's fine. <laughs> Podcast startup Luminary. Royal the podcasting. Why is she starting with this? 
Uh, since we've done it. The Verge confirmed today, however, that two months or so after its launch, just <laughs> co-founder Joe Perzicki stepped down as chief strategy officer. He remains close to CEO Matt Sachs, a luminary spokesperson says, and still holds shares. The company replaced Perzicki, Perzicki with Jeff Saunders, a former VP of product and technology at jet.com, who is now Luminary's chief product officer. Is jet.com still around? Jet.com's like a wholesale, no, not a wholesale, discounted items like woot.com, I guess. Whatever. I don't know. Who cares? Since taking on the role, Saunders has increased the engineering team from 20 to 30 people. Whoa. The spokesperson says. <laughs> The company didn't immediately respond to a request for comment. Uh, it's unclear why he left. I don't know. Why is this story on here? I thought it was going to be way bigger. I remember adding this to the docket and then not reading it. <laughs> going, I should read this. It's unclear what's going on at Luminary or how its subscription model is panning out. The company gives initial users a free trial to its premium content, but some people reported a confusing cancellation process. Instead of outright deleting their accounts, Luminary requires them to switch to a free account, which means people are still technically have accounts. They just can't access Luminary's exclusive shows. I mean, that's how it's a podcasting platform. They, in order to download podcasts, you're going to need to make an account. I mean, I guess it makes sense. It's fine. Meanwhile, the company has continued to struggle to court the broader podcasting industry. At launch, and still, the app is missing some podcasting biggest shows, including the New York Times, The Daily, uh, Joe Rogan Show, Gimlet Media Shows. Wow, Jesus. Yeah, that's uh, those are big shows. Holy crap. Uh, other shows, like New York Times' Caliphate and Modern Love are available on Luminary, but others are not. But The Daily's not. Um, okay, well... Let's uh, extrapolate that. So that's important. It missing those big shows because uh, you have to, for a podcast player, in order for a podcast player to access your show, the owner has to opt in to allow that to be on there. They have to uh, hook up their RSS feeds. Not hook it up, but you know, input their RSS feed, uh, apply to the luminary. So the, I got. Well, let's let's look like this. The app, the pro application process for iTunes is or Apple Podcasts, excuse me, is that you yeah you get your RSS feed for your podcast. You get a podcast provider or uh, server service. <laughs> I have one. You get a service like Libsyn, and then uh, you pay them. And you set up your podcast and you get an RSS feed. RSS feed is the key for everybody to access your podcast. You go to iTunes, to Apple Music, Apple Podcasts, and you apply and you say, hey, I want to make this podcast, put it up there. And then you send that in, an application thing, and then they go, oh, as long as you're not like, you know, crazy or racist, they go, all right, good to go. And oh, that is, I can't do that, uh, that finger gesture anymore. Oh, man, take it back. <laughs> I might have to bleep something. <laughs> that was a finger. That was the okay finger gesture that is uh, adopted by the white right right now. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, they say okay, good to go. And then at that point, in a couple of days, your podcast is ready to. It, it's it's there's a feed. The the feed feeds into Apple Music. Uh, you have to do the same thing for Google. Do the same thing for Spotify. Do the same thing for Stitcher. Well, not for Spotify because I think it's automatically on there if you have a podcast. Uh, at least that's how it worked for the constitutionals and the application. Um, so yeah, and then so for Luminary, what this is saying is that Joe Rogan's podcast, the biggest show, the biggest, hands down, the biggest podcast in the world. You know, probably him, Adam Carolla, and Mark Maron. White guys. Uh, if you're a white guy, you'll succeed in any medium. <laughs> and if you're an angry white guy, oh, you'll make the most money. Maron, Joe Rogan, <laughs> Adam Carolla. Angry white guy with opinion? <laughs> and and if you so if those shows if those shows are on there, if Joe Rogan's show isn't on there, then he's he's saying that he doesn't want that service to he doesn't want people to use that service for his even if it's free for to access his podcast because it's luminary and I guess you know maybe it's because you know they're paying 
everybody to be exclusive, but he's not an exclusive person because he puts out like five a week, I think. Uh, so yeah, there you go. I mean, that's that's just that's that's how it is. That that really is how it is. Uh, and Luminary, for it to come out and say we're going to be this new podcasting platform that everybody's going to use, and to and for it not to even have uh, th- three out of Hold on. The biggest New York Times show or even Gimlet Media, which is one of the oldest running, if not the oldest running podcast companies. Um, Very interesting. Very interesting to see. I can't believe that uh, they don't have big shows still because that was that was an issue when I wrote new that episode of News Time uh, several months ago. Kissing the mic. (laughs) And finally, Famies. Oh, this is what I wrote in the thing. I'm going to read you the uh, description of what I wrote. In the, but you can see it. This comes from Variety, written by Matt Donnelly. A-listers, A-list producers, executives pledged to mention, to mentor women directors with Reframe Rise. I haven't slept in four days. No, it's truly been like that. Like, I've been, like, last night I had to sleep on my couch because it was so loud. And I banged on the wall and everything. It is just so GD loud. Gosh darn loud. I'm going to bleep that. (laughs) A group of A-list producers and executives are combating Hollywood gender inequality in a pledge to mentor women directors in the middle of their careers. That's a time when at least one prominent study suggests they disappear from show business entirely. Reframe Rise, an initiative of Reframe, the parody organization run by Women in Film and Sundance Institute, I know them, is a pilot program that will pair eight film female directors with advisors who will identify job opportunities, refine creative pitches, and sharpen participants' business acumen. Sue Kroll, Stephanie Allain, Michael DeLuca, Poppy Hanks, Paul Fahey, and Bruna Pan, Pan, oh, Papandera, Papandrea are among the first round spons- of sponsors committing to a minimum of two years of work with their assigned directors. Oh, wow. Okay, I was already, after just reading that it was just going to be eight women, I was all ready to go. Well, that's not going to help out. But uh, this is that's a, that's a really interesting program. For two years? Oh, my gosh. You know, even if they only manage to land, you know, TV shows and, and one movie, in lieu of, you know, two movies and several TV shows, you know, if it's just TV shows and whatever, who cares? I'm, I'm very, this is, this is uh, great news for the industry. This is, it's, it's really, really, really compelling to see that. However, this compared to, not however, it's really compelling to see this, this compared to, you know, um, writers, Writers, you know, the writers that we talked about, (laughs) Uh, this is something, this is actually doing something versus an inclusion writer. That's not doing anything, you know, or, or talking about it is not doing anything. You know what I'm saying? Uh, This is really putting your money where the mouth is. This is, I, I, I wholly endorse this because if it is, it is, if it is true that women do disappear, then this is something that can really help. Now I wonder if they're going to do. I wonder if like next year they're going to switch out the like a, to a new set of sponsors and those women or those people are going to help another eight, a set of eight women so that it's just basically ongoing. So Paul Fahey and then that the group before him are still talking to these women for another year going into 2021 and then this new set of women are doing, you know, 2020 to 2022. But this is really cool. In an industry where networks, pathways, and open doors lead to opportunity, it is crucial to gain access and to be supported at every level, and that requires a community-wide commitment. Allison Emilio, director of Reframe, says, she tells Variety. Trying to forge more sustainable careers for women directors is the third measure taken by Reframe since its 2017 inception. Wow, and they're already doing this? It kicked off by creating a credit stamp for audiences that guarantees film and TV shows were made equally by men and women. The group also created a 14-step, quote-unquote, cultured toolkit 
to help major media companies and smaller studios fundamentally change hiring practices and identify blind spots to inequality. The RISE program seeks to address the issue of talent pipelines. Yeah, this is this is very this is very interesting. Um, I'm glad this I'm glad this exists because you you hear about you know someone goes uh, I'm gonna I'm like it was like they'll talk about a TV show or a movie and they say it was just me and my friends you know we just made oh we got to do this for four or five years and it was great <laughs> and then you look at the crew the people who produced it the writers the actors and it's mostly white mostly male and you know you you gotta be taken aback and go <laughs> your friends are mostly white like. Like, yeah, of course you had fun. They all look like you. Scott and Steve and Bill and Adam. Just said a bunch of white names. <laughs> the role of a director is targeted as a powerful space for change, not simply because of its visibility and creative autonomy. 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 The director of a film is often charged with hiring other prominent departments, heads, and key talent. Uh, they reference the Annenberg Inclusion Initiative, a bunch of other stuff. This is great. Ooh, let's look at the people. The inaugural class of Rise sponsors includes Stephanie Allen, Carolyn Bernstein, Nicole Brown, Paul Fahey, Eric Fahey. Keep going, Chad. Uh, Poppy Hanks. I wonder. Nope, probably not. <laughs> Sue Kroll. I know Sue Kroll. I know her. Yeah. Matt Newman. Uh, Mark Ordesky. Okay, I'm only saying the names I know. Uh, Christina Rogers. And I think that might be it. Yeah, I don't know anybody else. All right, well, there you go. Hopefully we're able to get some parody going on. Although, and this is going to receive a little bit of pushback, you know. <laughs> whenever I get, I really get those fans... <laughs> And they listen for episode one, episode one thirty, and they hear this episode, and they didn't turn it off after I said that thing earlier. But uh, you know, hiring women or somebody, a person of color, just for the sake of doing it, is not going to do you any favors. Get people who fit the job well. Don't just hire a woman just to say, just to check off a box. Don't just uh, make a. Uh, don't just make a show black because you can, just because you know black. There you go. Um, that doesn't help anybody. <laughs> it doesn't make anything look good. And if and if it turns out bad, it's worse because you did that. So, and uh, I know there's I know good and bad aren't an excuse to turn black and white. <laughs> I know there's you know I think I, I know there's like a whole uh, just like there's a whole spectrum of gender. There's a <laughs> there's a whole spectrum of. <laughs> of uh, <laughs> of quality spectrum of quality <laughs> quality fluidity <laughs> oh my god if i'm not canceled i'm going to be canceled <laughs> uh i'll just claim mental health <laughs> okay oh boy hey listen if you like what you heard here and i just <laughs> you probably didn't <laughs> head on over to the website com. Uh, where there's going to be some stuff, some interviews. Uh, it's like a hub for all the things I do. There's, there's, uh, I'm doing an interview in uh, an hour and 13 minutes with one of the stars of the NBC show Perfect Harmony. His name is Gino Seegers. You'll probably see that interview. <laughs> I don't know when, because <laughs> it won't be next week. <laughs> no, you'll probably see it soon. Uh, I also have an interview with uh, Emma Wilman coming up next week. It was supposed to go up this week, but I, I have not been getting any sleep. So, there's that. So, <laughs> you haven't been getting any sleep. You shouldn't do some work. No, it's not how it works for me. And then, uh, head on over to the website, uh, youtube.com slash C++ Comedy to see a video version of the show, as well as the premiere show, News Time, which is a weekly news show, entertainment news show, and it's like the Daily Show, less funny. Do a different topic every week. This week I did how the NBA relates to Hollywood and that what they, what NBA players do in Hollywood. I did a very elaborate cold open. That is a reference to the Aaron Carter song. That's how I beat Shaq. 
uh, but I made it Shaq beating Charles Barkley. But I did it, <laughs> but I shot it in the style of the video, that freestyle from TMZ where Shaq was rapping about Kobe eating a dick. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what I did. So it's <laughs> there's three layers to that onion. I liked it a lot. Definitely check it out. It's very funny. And uh, follow us on Instagram, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, all at C Plus Comedy. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.